I think we should talk about universality of art, mm, of every kind of art, uh, even in the literature, in the end it's only a matter of translation. Uh, I believe that art is universal because the needs of humans are universal. The noise of the streets, the language of the people, the value of things, the mood of young people can change. Everything can change except the human need for beauty and tenderness. Let me... Let, I, I think of Angelo Roncalli, Pope John XXIII and his famous speech to the moon. During a difficult moment like the one the world lived with the crisis between Cuba and US, uh, we are talking about the 60s, the, the, the Cold War, the crisis within the church, and the Second Vatican Council. In his speech he said, uh, what, what a beautiful moon tonight. When you get home tonight, caress your children and say, this is the caress of the Pope. He had understood that in a moment of crisis, like the one that the world was experiencing, it was necessary to start from beauty and tenderness. And I think that we must fight to, so that these two things are not killed inside. I am reminded to the Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 11, when he say, Remember not you bring your roots, but your roots are leading you. What I'd like to bring from Italy is an element that relates to the sphere of uh, sensitivity, not closely related to that. And I'm speaking of the biological capacity to interpret the beauty. Uh, my heart is Italian, especially in my vision of the beauty and my interpretation of the beauty um, all typical Italian. Uh, the, 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 the delicacy and the search for poetry is a typical of Italian literature. Um, I'm thinking about of Calvino or Guareschi or Maggiani and this is, this is deeply rooted in me. My whole life follows this curse and uh, I'm totally immersed in this state, in all the things I do. Uh, I mean, the way I look at the, uh, at the sunset, uh, the moon or the people on the street, uh, all is conditioned by this uh, culture of beauty. It's something that belongs to me biologically. About New York City, um, there are two, two characteristics that of New York that I would like to live, uh, not only live in, in Italy, but worldwide. The first is that I believe dance in New York is a part of the deep web of life of the city, as nowhere else in the world. The dance also biologically belongs in New York. Regardless how you think, uh, the dance community in New York City, as in USA, uh, is a healthy, uh, mature, um, undoubtedly adult. Unlike the rest of the world, the United States, the economic crisis uh, has not affected the dignity of those who do this job, as in the case 
in public opinion. The second reason is that for me New York is the New Jerusalem. The first name of Jerusalem was a Shalom, peace. Abram gave it a second name, Iraq, that means vision. So Jerusalem was, or is, the city with peace and vision. The New York that I know is the New York that, artistically speaking, retains a peaceful vision of the art. Uh, even when you deal with the social issues or opposition, it does this with a unifying spirit and it should be so for the global community of art. Dance has given me much more than I could ever give back. Give me a job told me a second language, more or less, introduced me to a love for literature, but most of all has given me a sensible sight. Dance has opened the door for me that would have remained closed. Uh, in this sensitive dimension, it has given me the greatest gift I certainly owe that the ability to tell my father I love you before he died. And I believe that this sensitive dimension is the greatest joy that I received. Uh, no pain, I will not say that there are states of pain. Maybe some displeasure, but I think it falls into the normal economy of professionalism. I think the troubles are the same in any professional environment. I believe that art should provide the opportunity to recover for things and therefore I think is a task for an artist or at least mine. First, go back to listening. Uh, I think it's time to pay attention to the calls that come from reality. So, listening is a difficult thing in our time and many times you cannot even hear yourself so listening as an exercise of mind and heart we should return to the effort of understanding others and then to the effort of understanding ourselves second return to sensitivity because our time has killed sensitivity and I think that we need to know how much living costs. We must discover as human that is the prerogative of being sensitive because when we are human we are more sensitive. Uh, that all does I think therefore I am so being philosophical has become an essential problem. Luigi Verdi says, it's, it's not true uh, that I think therefore I am. For me, it's true that I am when I'm sensitive. Third, the brief. Because each space has an effect of this nervous system on the brief. Uh, because every space is a mental space also. It's a mental space also. The book of Genesis in chapter 2 says, God breathed into man's nostrils the soul life, and the man become a living creator. So the spirit 
come from within. If you think about it, every act of meditation takes place after a deep breath. The task of an artist is to give the breath of life to the people. I mean, pe people already have the breath, but uh, today it's, 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 it's stiflet. The best service you can do is create art in a time of crisis to return this breed of life. For go back to the prophecy. We need to return to conceiving art as a prophetic activity, as an activity of light. Uh, the, the fluidity of this society has mixed and diluted it all. Uh, it also the power of the art and then everything is relative sometimes I have the feeling that being a dancer is like having an idea it's the desire to belong to a community rather than take responsibility that the role of the dancer and then the artist has inherent in, in, in itself